All right. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the call today. Seven ways to use chat GPT or artificial intelligence to grow your notary business. I'm going to share my screen here. And again, like I said, I had to switch systems. So this isn't going to be as pretty as I had hoped, but you get the general idea here. The, the thing about content is we already know that creating consistent content is pr a proven way to grow business, especially a service-based business. Done correctly and consistently, it can help boost uh, search engine optimization. It can help um, draw and attract more of the clients that you want to work with. And it can double, triple, quadruple audiences if you're doing anything besides your service-based business or just your service business. And let's dive deeper into why that content actually matters. So every piece of fresh content that you create uh, is an opportunity for you to demonstrate your expertise, your knowledge, your experience, your personality. If you do it correctly, if you structure that content correctly, uh, using the right keyword density, it can also help boost your search engine optimization and, of course, then your online visibility. Articles, emails, social media, all of that is designed to attract not just default customers that are willy-nilly, what are kind of like what we call general notary work, but you can get really strategic with it to attract more of your ideal customers. Who do you want to work with? Which appointments bring more joy or more revenue to your business. Creating content helps draw more of those in. Also, original content where you share your ideas and you become a thought leader in your industry can lead to more connection opportunities. Could be uh, introductions to industry professionals. You can do get invited for speaking engagements. And I'm not just talking about conferences and seminars and like those larger scale things. But sometimes it's just a, an invite to speak to a group of realtors at their sales meeting or at the Chamber of Commerce uh, events or some sort of networking event. You can also help people solve their problem by giving lots of information. It's a very uh, generous activity creating content like this because you can share and you can help solve people's problems. Well, the bottom line is people work with who they know like, and trust. And creating consistent, valuable content is one of the best ways that you can show your personality and your expertise so people can get to know you, like you, and trust you. So how, what is ChatGPT and artificial intelligence? Well, in very layman's terms, because I'm not a, a technology person at all, it's basically a language model that uses complex machine learning algorithms to analyze and anticipate conversations. And it's designed to take information in. So you ask a question or send it a message and it will deliver what it thinks that you'd like to hear. And the, more, the higher quality of that message or that question that you give it, the higher the quality is uh, the output is going to be. So think about it like this. Garbage in, if you ask a really vague or bad question, you're going to get garbage out. But if you put quality in, you get quality out. And this will blow your mind what this thing is doing. In fact, what we're going to do is we're just going to ask it, what is ChatGPT and how it can help notaries grow their business here in just a minute? But before I sh uh, shift gears and start sharing that screen, I want to highlight the seven ways that we're going to use ChatGPT to build your business, create content. First, we can whip up social media posts. Anybody else struggle with creating content on social media? I hear it all the time. People don't know what to say. Well, this can help solve that problem. We're going to draft blog articles. We're going to improve website copy, sales pages, and search engine optimization. We can also generate connection messages like on LinkedIn. We're going to create lead magnets and ebooks for those who want to grow their business beyond 
just a one person show. This is the way you can do that. We're gonna construct email broadcasts and email sequences with this thing. You can also scribe scripts for videos and podcasts. If you don't know what to say on a video, if you want a three minute video, we can show you how to write a brief script for that. And the bonus here is you can also create a newsletter. You can actually have this technology draft out multiple articles for one newsletter. And then we've got a bonus side hustle here too that I'm gonna tell you about too, because this is such a new opportunity. All right, so let's look at chat GPT itself. The first thing I want to just really highlight here, guys, because there are other artificial intelligence software out there. They usually charge a fee for that. This is completely free. This is like anything that you've seen paid, probably 10x or more. I've heard some people say this is 100 times smarter than the current technology out there. And it's open source as well, which is another part of an opportunity. It gives you right here some examples of what you can do with it, like got any creative ideas for a 10 year old's birthday, you can type that in here. It shows you the capabilities. Check this out. It remembers what the user said in earlier conversations and it allows you to do follow up corrections. I'm gonna demonstrate that for you here in just a minute. And here's the limit limitations. And this is gonna be huge for you because it tells you right now, occasionally the information is incorrect. It might produce harmful instructions or biased content. Remember, it's not a human being. And three, it has very limited knowledge of world events after 2021. So that's an, an important factor too. This is not connected to like Google search or anything like that. This, this is their own algorithms. So when it comes to our industry in particular, like this system, I tested it a few times. It does not know the difference between remote online notarization and in-person electronic notarization. So if you ask it IPEN questions, it sometimes gives you wrong answers or vice versa. But that's okay. A lot of notaries don't know the difference between those two. But the real point of that is that you still have to take 100% responsibility for the content that you create and publish. So this is technology is going to be like a, a prompt, a very powerful writing or creation prompt for you, but it's not perfect. So you can't rely on it 100%, at least not yet. So let's show, let me show you what exactly I, I, how it works. And I can't use my other screen, so bear with me one second. We're just going to type this in. Let's ask it, what is chat GPT and how can it help notaries build their business? Oh, an error occurred. Why not? To add that to the list. So when you register with chat GPT, you'll probably have, you can use a email to log in or you can use your Google account. All right, what is chat GPT and how can notaries use it to build their business? So as you can see, it says, I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with a chatbot chat bot called ChatGPT, which is weird because that's exactly what it is. But as for notaries, how they can use the technology to build their business, there are a few ways this could be done. For example, a notary could use a website or social media to promote their services and reach out to potential clients. They could use electronic document management software or to streamline the process of verifying and authenticating documents, which could save time. Anyway, it goes on and on. This isn't uh, the best Let's ask this. What is chat 
GPT. And how can notaries use it to create content for their business? <laughs> it's being really stubborn today. So notaries can create content for their business. There are several options to consider. One way is to use social media platforms to create and share content about their services, such as blog posts, videos explaining the notarization process, or the value of notarized documents. They can also use a website to publish content, and on and on and on it goes. So let's take some of these uh, examples that it gave us and see exactly what it can do. So the first thing I'm gonna do, number one on our list was whip up social media posts. So I'm gonna tell it to write a series of three social media posts that highlight the value, come on. and convenience of a, no, of a mobile notary. Now see how I gave it a little more detail? So I'm kind of prompting it in itself about the value and convenience. So here are three social media posts that highlight the value and convenience of a mobile notary. Number one, did you know that you don't have to drive across town to get your documents notarized? With a mobile notary, we can come to you. Whether you're at home, at work, or on the go, we can make the process of getting your documents notarized quick and easy. Then number two, one of the other benefits of a mobile notary it goes into. Number three, it talks about COVID-19 and those types of restrictions. So these gives you three writing prompts right here on how to do it. Let's do this. Elaborate with three more topics. Sure, here are three additional topics that could be expanded upon in social media posts highlighting the value and convenience of a mobile notary. Flexibility. Security, sound familiar? This is all part of our normal life, but this gives a framework and a structure that you can write with. Cost effectiveness. And then check this out. Let's do the second one. Let's draft a blog article. Write one blog post. about the top, let's say five reasons people should use a mobile notary instead of going to the bank or a shipping center. See what it comes up with. Are you tired of making a special trip to the bank or shipping center just to get your documents notarized? If so, you're not alone. Many people find it inconvenient and time consuming to have to go out of their way to get their documents notarized. Fortunately, there's an alternative to this inconvenience. And here are the benefits of using a mobile notary. It's convenience, it's flexibility, it's security. What else do they come up with here? Cost effectiveness. You don't have to pay for transportation costs. Availability. Right here, not a perfect article about the value of a mobile notary, but this is a really good foundation if you struggle with what to write, this is a really good starting point. And of course you'd sprinkle in your own experience, your personality, what applies directly to your business, but this gives you those that um, foundation to launch from. Now check this out too. Let's rewrite this using humor 
and cheesy notary jokes. Let's see what it comes up with. Are you sick and tired of having to take a road trip to the bank or shipping center just to get your documents notarized? Well, we've got the cure for your notary woes, mobile notaries. Let's see what other jokes and humor it has in there. I don't know, cheesy notary jokes. <laughs> okay. All right, convenience with a mobile notary. You don't have to worry about fitting your schedule around the notary's office hours. They'll come to you whether you're at home at work or just hanging out at the coffee shop. You'll be able to get your documents notarized without even having to put your pants, put on your pants. Well, unless the mobile notary specifically requests it, please be respectful and wear pants if requested. All right, that's a cheesy notary joke. It's got ways to tie your personality in it if you want to go for any of the emotions, sadness, anger, intensity, humor, whatever it is that you choose to do. All right, let's look at number three on our list, which is improving uh, website copy, sales pages, search engine, engine, uh, search engine optimization. So let's just give it instructions to write a landing page for a notary public business in Houston, Texas, and include SEO keywords like notary near me, credentialed, professionals, and mobile notary Houston. Let's see what it comes up with. Welcome to our business, Houston's premier notary public service. Are you in need of a notary but don't have the time or energy to drive to an office? No problem. Our team of credentialed professionals is here to bring the notary to you. As a mobile notary in Houston, we can come to your home, office, or any other location that's convenient for you. And then it goes on to write additional copy. You can literally take this, add your own zest, and create a landing page or a website for your business. Okay, so let's do this too. Let's try another one here. Let me see, I'm gonna try to because this one's really long, so I'm just gonna see really quick if I can just copy and paste something to make this one easier. Let's say you've already written something on your website or if you've got a product that you've been selling. In my case, I've got a um, book that I have written called the uh, Business Building Challenge. I wrote some copy kind of on a, on a whim and I added it to my Amazon page. But let's say we want to have the chat GPT edit that. So here's what I'm, I'm just going to paste this in here. So this is a little sales paragraph I did for that book, right? Rewrite this to help sell more books is the instructions I give it. It takes whatever that data is and rewrites it in a in more of a maybe a direct sales kind of way. And maybe you like it, maybe you don't, but you can take it, tweak it. Sometimes this will knock you if you're hitting like a, a wall creatively and you're like, I just don't know what to say, you can do that. This actually sounds pretty decent, but here's what I'm gonna have it do. I'm gonna rewrite this, rewrite this with more excitement and use more of your own words. And it's gonna do that. So it's going to basically almost change exactly what I originally typed in there using just the keywords. 
but it's got lots more exclamation points, which matches my personality. That's not all. The Notary Business Building Challenge also teaches you to create a notary funnel that draws in customers like a magnet. Along the customer journey of your business, Soroka shows you how to seize 13 different opportunities to demonstrate your experience, strengthen relationships, and let your clients get to know, like, and trust you. That's not bad copy at all. Let's do one more here in this same category. Right? a one page website about the value of having an apostille facilitator, I always struggle with that word, facilitator, guide you through the apostille process from start to finish. Anybody on this call an apostille agent or exploring the idea of becoming an apostille agent and just wondering how to talk about it? Let's see. Are you in need of an apostille for an important document but don't know where to start? A professional apostille facilitator can guide you through the process from start to finish, making it quick and easy for you to get the apostille you need. But why hire an apostille facilitator in the first place? Here are just a few benefits. Listen to this. Expertise, time-saving, peace of mind, cost-effective. It can save you money in the long run. It helps you avoid costly mistakes. This is good copy. You could take this and use this and help sell your apostille services just straight away. Want to take this one step further, you can use and include your city, your state, wherever you want to specialize. That's going to help your search engine optimization. Here's the other thing, too. You can add that SEO component into any of these. You can say, hey, use SEO keywords and phrases, such and such and such and such and such and such, and it will create the density. You can even increase the keyword density if you want to on these. All right, let's try another one, because one of the things I hear all the time is, I don't know what to say when I want to connect with people. So let's instruct it here. And I'm going to just clear this cache a little bit here. Start a new one. All right. Write a friendly and polite request for a review of my finger printing services last week. Let's just add that on there and see what happens. Dear valued customer, I hope this email finds you well. I wanted to reach out and thank you for using our finger printing services last week. We strive to provide top-notch service to all our customers and we value your feedback. Would you be willing to take a few moments to leave us a review of your experience with our services? Your feedback is important to us and helps us improve our services for future customers. Thank you in advance for your time and consideration. If you have any questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to contact. It's a little bit on the wordy side for sure, but if you added your own review links and your own personality, that is definitely usable. Check this one out. Write a brief request to connect on LinkedIn because of our shared network and connections. Let's see what that says. Hey, Bob, I hope this message finds you well. I noticed that we have a shared network and several mutual connections on LinkedIn. I'm always looking to expand my professional network and thought it might be beneficial for us to connect. I'm particularly interested in learning more about your experience in the blank industry. Oh, that's brilliant. And seeing how we might be able to collaborate or help each other out in the future. Would you be willing to, or open to connecting on LinkedIn? That's a decent message that you can use. Again, speckling your own personality, maybe your own experience and something unique about that person, but that's good stuff. Let's look at, um, ah, here we go. Let's write... A very short and funny text message 
appointment reminder. For one hour before appointment time. Let's see what that comes up with. Hey, just a friendly reminder that you have an appointment in one hour. Don't forget to show up unless you want to spend the rest of the day staring at the inside of your fridge trying to find something to do. All right, a little on the cheesy side and over the top, but you can say, try again. Here's another option. Rise and shine, just a quick reminder that your appointment is in 60 minutes. Don't be late or we'll have to start without you. And trust me, you don't want to miss the fun. See you soon. Again, not bad. It at least might prompt you and come up with something on your own. Then let's try this. I told you it, can, it has a full range of emotions, right? So rewrite as an angry message. Oh, see, now this has already changed. It's already growing. It's not able to write uh, angry messages or confrontationals. Okay, so this is evolving. Let's say rewrite in stern professional language. Let's see what it comes up with there. This is a reminder that you have an appointment scheduled for blank. Please make sure to arrive on time to ensure that we can begin the appointment as scheduled. If you are unable to make the appointment, da 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 da. So you can manipulate the tone of your message, your blog posts, everything on here. All right, how are we doing on time? We're about 30 minutes in right now, right, Trisha? I think that's perfect. Let's move on to creating lead magnets in eBooks. This is really powerful. And this is part of the scary part, I think, for some people. Let's just say write a one page report about how to use Google Business Profile to enhance online visibility visibility for your local business. All right, think about what we're talking about here. This is a one-page report that you could turn into a PDF and make it downloadable from your website to help other local business owners in your city. So it's a way of you providing value to them. Hey, let me help you. Google Business Profile helps my business. It can help yours too. Let's see what it comes up with. This is going to be much longer to read than we'd want to read on this, but check it out. Google Business Profile is a free tool that allows local businesses to manage their online presence across Google, including Google Search and Maps. Here's how. Number one, claim your business. Two, verify your business. Three, add photos and videos. Does this sound familiar to any of you? We coach this all the time, right? This is actually decent stuff, and it writes it out for you. Add your own personality, your flavor, your city details and maybe particular businesses that you're trying to help, and you've got a home run here. So let's see how we can enhance this. Go into more detail about ways to optimize your profile and rank at the top of Google searches in your area. Want to enhance this a little bit? Want to make it a two-page free report? Here's some tips. Use relevant keywords in your business name, description, and categories. Keep your business information up to date and current. Encourage customers to leave reviews. Sound familiar? Use high-quality photos and videos. And finally, optimize your website. Your website's an important part of your online presence. Good advice. Now check this out. What are your closing thoughts on the importance of Google 
business profile to the success of a local business. We're gonna just ask this AI system what its closing thoughts are. Google Business Profile is an important tool for local businesses looking to attract new customers and manage their online presence. By creating and maintaining a Google presence, they enhance their visibility. Just two little paragraphs right there that cl close it out for you. Really powerful. Now this is gonna be, this will blow your mind too. Right out. The chapters and quick summaries of a 10 chapter book about how to become a notary public in California. Anybody else have dreams of writing a book, but it's just so overwhelming? This is literally going to outline a 10 chapter book. Number one, well, it's using the plural wrong. Introduction to Notary Public in California, eligibility requirements for becoming a Notary Public, applying, preparing for the Notary Public exam, taking the Notary Public exam, obtaining your commission, bonding and insuring your Notary business, using your seal, Let's see what the last two come up with. Keeping up to date on California laws. Okay, that's great. And finally, 10, renewing. So a 10 chapter book right there. And let me just share with you too, guys. I went into a little bit of a rabbit hole uh, on this the other day and literally spent 90 minutes writing a 10 chapter book on how to cultivate relationships using emotional intelligence. And whatever it gave me as chapters, I used that as prompts again. I gave it a message and said, talk more about this. And it wrote a book about how to build relationships using emotional intelligence. Not a very good book, but an excellent starting point. This is really powerful stuff. Now let's look at the other cool thing that you can do with this. And this is constructing email broadcasts and even uh, email sequences and campaigns. So we'll start a fresh one over here. Write an email to an estate planning attorney, attorney about how a mobile notary can bring more value to their firm and clients. Anybody else struggle with what to say to probate and estate planning attorneys? This can help. I hope this finds you finds you well. As a mobile notary, I wanted to reach out to discuss the potential value that my services could bring to your firm and clients. As you may already know, a mobile notary is a notary public that's able to travel to a location. This can be especially useful for clients who may have difficulty traveling due to physical limitations, time constraints, and geographic distance. By offering mobile notary services, your firm can provide more convenient and accessible option to your clients and yada, 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 it goes on from there. But let's say it's a little too dry for your personality. You rewrite this, rewrite this with more personality, personality, humor, and lawyer jokes. Let's see what it comes up with. Dear estate planning attorney, I hope this email finds you well and not buried under a mountain of paperwork. As a mobile notary, I wanted to reach out and offer my services as a way to add some convenience and levity to your practice. I know that as an estate planning attorney, you have a ton on your plate, pun intended. Between drafting wills, setting trust, and dealing with probate, it can be a daunting task. That's where I come in. As a mobile notary, I can bring my notary stamp to your clients, saving them the hassle of traveling to a notary's office or another location, plus it's a great opportunity for a little bit of lawyer humor. Hey, at least I don't have to go to court today. I just have to meet with the notary. It's a really cheesy joke. You can have it rewritten however you want to, but it's a great way to show some personality in here. Now, here's where things get really interesting. 
you can write a three email sequence and it can be any you can do 52 email sequence if you want about a networking event for legal professionals that specialize in divorce use humor make it fun like a party atmosphere. Let's see what it comes up with. Hey there, Legal Eagles. Are you ready to shake things up and make some new connections in the diverse, diverse the divorce law world? Look no further because we have just the event for you. On such and such date, we'll be hosting a networking bash for divorce law professionals at Blink location. There will be drinks, snacks, and plenty of opportunities to mingle with you, colleagues, and make some valuable connections. Mark your calendars and get ready to mix and mingle. That's the first email. Email two, just a friendly reminder. Don't forget to bring your business cards and a smile because we've got a feeling you'll be making some new connections and having a great time. Diver divorce law enthusiasts. Pretty crazy. All right, let's take a look then at another little sequence that we can do. I'm gonna freshen this up here. Okay, write a three email sequence. First, requesting a LinkedIn recommendation, and then two gentle but funny reminders to actually do it. I know this is a struggle for people too. We ask for recommendations, people forget. So how can we follow up? Email number one, request for LinkedIn recommendation. I hope this finds you well. I was wondering if you'd be willing to write me a LinkedIn recommendation. If you're able to do this, let me know and I'll send over some bullet points outlining the skills and experience that you can use as a reference. Number two, I wanted to follow up on the LinkedIn recommendation request that I sent you a few days ago. I'm still hoping to get your endorsement on my LinkedIn profile. Would be grateful if you could set up the time to write. I understand you're busy. If that's the case, let me know. Yada, yada, yada. Number three, I hope this finds you well. About that LinkedIn request, I know you're super busy. Yada, yada. Still not funny enough? Oh, but there's some humor here. Plus, if you write me a recommendation, it means I'll have one less thing to nag you about. Win, win. So there's some humor in there too. If it's not funny enough for you, you just tell it to write something funnier. Let's move on to number seven. So number seven is writing uh, scripts for videos or even podcasts, full podcast scripts. So let's start with a video script. Let's say you want to get on YouTube. You're not sure what you want to talk about or you have an idea, but you don't know what to say. You can use this to write a three minute video script about how a well-trained wedding officiant can make a positive difference on your big day. Let's see what it comes up with. Hi, and welcome to this video. As you start planning your wedding, one of the most important decisions you'll make is who will officiate the ceremony. A wedding officiant is responsible for leading and conducting the ceremony and can make a huge impact on the overall success of your wedding. So what makes a well-trained wedding officiant? First and foremost, da -da 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 -da, it goes through a few points here, and it's gonna give you a full script that will take about three minutes to do uh, as a video. You can also obviously use this however you want if you wanted it to just be a blog post. 
but this is a little on the dry side. Let's rewrite. Rewrite this to be much funnier. Hey there, welcome to this super hilarious video about how a well-trained vetting officiant can take your big day from boring to legendary. As you start planning your wedding, you might be wondering who the heck is going to stand up there and bore your guests with that long-winded speech about love and commitment. But fear not, because a well-trained wedding officiant can take your ceremony from Snoozeville to the party of the century. Definitely a lot more personality and humor in there. All right, let's take a look at podcasts now. A lot of people moving into podcasts for one reason or the other. Sometimes they're talking to notaries. Sometimes they're talking to their city, business owners, whoever it might be. So let's write a podcast outline so we won't take up too much time about the importance of staying in touch with your clients to help build lifetime customers. Welcome to the podcast. Here are the benefits of staying in touch. Bullet points them out there. You got an intro, the benefits, how to stay in touch with your clients, regular communication, offer exceptional customer service, get feedback and ask for reviews. This is really good stuff. Case studies, maybe you have some customers you want to include in there, but it gives you the entire outline. And if you went into each one of these outlines, outline points, instead elaborate more and tell me more about um, uh, getting feedback and reviews and how to do it, it would do that and it would write it all out there for you. All right. Let's take a look at the um, bonus, the first bonus, which was the newsletter. So we went through seven ways you can use this right now. The eighth way is to write a newsletter. And newsletter it's funny how we go full circle, but newsletters are really coming back full stream, whether it's via email or um, uh, other web or digital based versions of it. Well, let's have it write a newsletter with six different articles about the nuances of adopting children from outside the US. This would be a way that you can bring value to your audience if you're getting into international adoptions. So it's gonna give you the first article here. Hague Convention adoptions are governed by the Hague Convention. Interesting. Again, you wanna do your due diligence, make sure that you're publishing accurate information, but this gives you six different articles here. Navigating the legal process of international adoption. Working with an international adoption agency, and it's gonna give the tips here. These are articles that you could use right now. You may have to do a home study where you go through the evaluation, preparing for your adopted child's arrival giving you tips on how to best do that. Take a look at number five, managing the emotional aspects of international adoption. It's going deep, it's thinking this through. And finally, number six, supporting your adopted child's cultural identity. This is very well thought out. It gives you a, a, at least a blueprint to either do some additional research or to uh, just add speckle your personality and your expertise in this and go with it. So the bonus number nine, or bonus number two, but number nine, this is where we're at right now, guys. Not very many people know that ChatGPT exists. It just came out November 30th. 
it's starting to gain steam. I'll tell you that for this training event, when I use the hashtag chat GPD, there were 67 uses of it on Instagram. When I used it today, there was over 2,700. So in less than a week, it's gaining that kind of steam and it will just go crazy now. But the thing is, as cool as the tool is, there's still gonna be people who are intimidated by the technology. They're intimidated by the creative process. They don't wanna deal with it. So if you wanted to provide this service and use this tool to scale that business very, very quickly, you have a huge opportunity to do that right now. You don't have to write just for your business. You can write content for other people's business and then charge them a fee to do so. In addition to that, a little bonus here, because it's open source, guys, you can, if you want to go scale really big on this, you can tap into the code, you can use the code to develop your own technology. And my coach and mentor is doing this for copywriting. He's incorporating his own teaching framework into it. Uh, I've got some big things going too about how to use that. And I think as we roll through 2023, there's going to be some big things that come out of using this technology. And you are on the ground floor of that right now. That's the opportunity that you have. Now, as promised, I told you that there'd be a way that you can uh, work more closely with me on this kind of stuff. I love it. This is just the beginning. I teach chat GPT prolific content creating as part of NBB starting in January. We're going to be using this technology as our writing prompt to kick this off and create and truly become prolific content creators as part of that class. You are invited to join me for that. It's just $127 a month for NBB. You'll get three or four of these prolific content creation classes and the teaching, but there's a lot more than that too. There, NBB is the largest collaboration of its kind ever. You get the chat GPT classes, you get Tom, our software, where you can actually you distribute the content that you create. You can use broadcast emails, you can send trackable links for videos, all that good stuff, it's all included. There's a weekly accountability call where we all come together and hold each other accountable. Notary Assist, the accounting software is included because every minute you're not doing your bookkeeping or going through shoeboxes of receipts, you can be cultivating relationships or working on your business. There's specific training uh, from industry leaders like Laura Buer, Jennifer Neitzel, Nina Penny, Sandra Long, Judy Lawrence, Sue Hope, uh, Zion Brock, Tyler Botsford, and more. Of course, I'm in there. All of my notary coach courses are in there, Sign and Thrive, the Morning Mastery, the Certified Reverse Mortgage Signing Professional, all of those classes are included, plus Signing Agent Marketing, LinkedIn Professional Profile, Laura Buer Presents, the World of Aposti Masterclass and Certification Program as part of it, and we do uh, nearly 20 live teaching calls every single month, all in there for just the 127 a month. You can cancel any time. No contract, no worries, no questions. We'd love to have you in there. And if you were just wondering what, uh, if you were alone in that, no, we have about 360 members right now. And this is just a few of their comments about what NBB has done for them. Uh, I consider it a huge gift to have access to all these amazing teachings in one place. Once I became an NBB member and had support and a place to learn, I had confidence to answer that phone and place those posts to get the notary work I signed up for. If you wanna join us, please go to joinnbb.com and Trisha will post that link in the chat for you. And with that, we will stop sharing the screen and we will start answering some questions. I'm eager to hear what you have to say. Trisha, how do we wanna do this? We wanna do the uh, raised hands first. Uh, we can, or Why don't I can we do the raise hands through. first, and then we'll go into the chat questions. Will you allow people to raise their hand? All right, Matt, I think you can unmute now and ask your question. Good to see you on today. 
Hey, Bill. Thanks for the presentation. Really appreciate the time. I can't hear um, you, though. Oh. You can't? Hold on one second. It's me. No, it's not you. It's me. There we go. You can hear me now? I can hear you now. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Bill. I appreciate the presentation today and the time. Um, I just have a little bit of concern, though, because uh, some of what I saw today I've read in your books or I've written myself. And so I'm a little worried that, you know, next week, my book, your book, our articles are going to be on every notary's website across the country. How do we prevent that? I don't know, um, Matt. I don't know that there is a way to prevent it. Um, I would hope that technology like this gets used responsibly, right? Like this should be taken and used and um, made to be your own, with your own experience, your own personality, your own flavor in it. But I know that a, most, a lot of people won't do that. They're just gonna copy and they're gonna paste that in there. The, the, um, the algorithm itself is not drawing from anybody else's collected work. So it's not like it's going out and scraping and stealing other people's information. It's just that a lot of times, like what you and I teach, Matt, a lot of it is logic-based, like go out and communicate with your customers. This is how you use Google Business Profile. And that's public knowledge. That's part of normal business conversation. So it's drawing from that. So I don't know if there's going to be a way to protect against that. What I do know is that we can't pretend like it's not happening. We can't just ignore it and we can't just stand by and hate it and refuse to use it. Or we can, absolutely. We can do whatever we want, right? But there is, it's coming. This AI, they've been talking about it for years. I was staunch, staunchly against it for up until two weeks ago. And now I realize that it's coming and it's changing everything. And in copywriting in particular, the industry that I have a coach and a mentor and I'm really looking at is terrified of what this is going to do for their industry. And I think there is a reason to be worried and be concerned, just like there was a reason to be concerned when uh, the ballpoint pen was invented, right? There's going to be a huge upheaval and shift in some market and markets. And I, with a lot of other technology, there might be some regulations there. I can already see how chat GPT is changing. Uh, they won't let you write angry words anymore. So it's adapting. There's probably going to be some regulation and stuff like that. And there's probably going to be a monetization factor at some point in this. So if you want to use it for free, you can jump in now. And Matt asked, why be creative if you no longer need to be? Well, I think there's some people who um, don't consider themselves, themselves creative or they just don't enjoy the creative process or this creative process. And I don't think that that will change with this. You either like it or you don't. I happen to love it. And I, the way I see it is the gap between mediocrity and greatness is going to be a little bigger. I think people who use this kind of technology and lean on it too much, you're gonna pick it right out. You're gonna, you're gonna know it. This, a robot wrote this, there's no personality, there's no passion, there's no emotion in it. You're gonna feel it. And then the people who commit to the craft that really do create, I think their work is gonna stand out even more. Great question. 16095, welcome. I don't know your name, but you're 16095. <laughs> Wanna unmute? Hello from New Jersey. Yes. Hi, Bill. Hi. Thank you um, for this class. Um, I have a question. As a wedding officiant, we, you know, we tell stories. Um, I'm sure there's other wedding officiants as well um, on here, but I like to write stories or I take their story because that's how you build it, is you just take their information and you build from there. I love humor, but I'm not always the funniest. Will I be able to take the information that is given from them and put it into this to create a, a their story? Because a lot of it is factual, but then you could, you know, kind of embellish it a little bit as long as you're not lying. Yeah. So that's the cool thing about this. Now, first, I would say don't enter any personal information into the chat GPT, of course. 
But you could you can get as specific as you want. R- write a funny story about uh, two people who met in Times Square over New Year's Eve in, right. in the year 2000. You can give it that specific information. Okay. See what it comes up with. A lot of times okay. it, it's kind of crap. Like it, and that's the um, the downside or the upside to technology is it doesn't have the experience. It doesn't have the world experience. So it's just going to be a real um, logical story, but it might give you the framework to say, oh, I see where it's going there. I can sprinkle this in or that's not what happened. This is what happened. So I can say that using it as a writing prompt has been the most valuable part of the whole thing for me. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. And I want to re go back to that garbage in garbage out thing. The more detail you have, the more conceptually you have in your head about what you want to create and you put that information in the more specific the information that comes out if you just say what's a notary it's just going to answer that question what's a notary but if you say how can a notary public help probate attorneys in san francisco build their business and get more clients it's going to get super more detailed on there more specific and even in the storytelling realm with the stories in particular, it gets really creative, even in the fiction side of things. Because one thing I didn't show because we were running out of time is I asked it to write a fictional story about three has been or two has been in the entertainment industry who partners with Selena Gomez to solve a murder in their condo building in Manhattan. Does that sound familiar? Familiar? It's like murders in the building, only murders in the building. And it did. It wrote out an entire script about that. And it had an interesting plot line. I rewrote it funny. It added some humor into it. So even on the fiction side, it can be helpful. What other questions do we have? Anybody that would want to raise their hand or do we go to the uh, saved questions? Trisha, do we have any saved questions? Can I have one other question? Yeah, please. Um, How about um, fun like word searches and um what you call those, uh, word search and crossword puzzles. Can you do something like that? Say it again. Tell me what you mean. You know, like crossword puzzles, would it would it give you like, say you might have a, because each you have to have topics for like say titles for each page. Would it, would it give you the words to go with the topic? You know what I'm saying? If you were creating <laughs> what? Like a um, book? Yeah, like a crossword puzzle or word search. A lot of that is like good reinforcement for learning, like to reiterate words that might be dealing with a particular topic just to get it reinforced in your memory, crosswords. But you, you'll have a topic, say for instance, um, I'm just gonna say what's in a notary bag? And it may give you all the listings of things that might go in a notary bag, I'm just saying. Well, Something like that? Let's try it. So let's yeah. see. <laughs> Thanks. So I don't know if it will specifically know how to um, create a crossword puzzle, right? But let's say, what items should every notary have in their notary bag? Let's see if it, how smart it is. A notary stamp, okay, or seal. Perfect, and it's even elaborating a little bit. Wow, okay, the notary journal, okay. That could apply. Identification. That's pretty good. <laughs> we should have theirs. They're in the notary certificate. Some states require that. Mm-hmm. A pen. Okay, so this, <laughs> this isn't bad, uh, but it yeah. would need some writing prompts for sure. A flashlight, like it's thinking outside the box. Other yeah. supplies, paper clips, yeah, should... pens, calculator. That's pretty good. Yeah, so it's it's not bad, but yes, you can yeah. absolutely do that. But again, uh, the more information you can give it, give it. The mm-hmm. information you get back. right, because you could do stay specific and things like that. So that's good. Thank you. You bet. And it looks like <laughs> Amy Lou even tried it in the chat. Create a crossword puzzle. So I think the options are endless, guys. This is not even thirty days old yet. So you can get in with it, and you can play with it, create with it. All right, Trisha, what other questions do we have? Uh, Do we have to download an app for this or is it a website? It's a website. And Trisha, if you want, please uh, post that link in the chat. It's open 
well, she'll post it in there for you. You just go to open the open AI is the company that runs chat GPT. All right, Jen Cooper, thank you for being here. Hey, Bill, it's nice to see you. Um, I want to I want to ask you a question and I don't, I don't want to be offensive at all, but how um, in two weeks did you change your mind about this with the concerns that Matt posted and, and I have as well as somebody like many people who works my butt off to create content, the idea that I can slave over something for however long it takes me and tomorrow it's on somebody else's webpage freaks me out and doesn't freak me out. And I'm not worried about sharing. I'm worried about what's the point of my effort, right? So I'm just curious how you got there in two weeks. Yeah, no problem, great question. So first I think there needs to be some clarity, right? So um, this software doesn't steal information from anybody. So it's not going out and scraping your blogs and somebody else's blogs and saying, oh, we're just gonna make this off of somebody else's efforts. It's not doing that. It's using language models to create and anticipate your language. So it has less likely a chance of being um, stolen from this than it does just publishing it. We all, mm -hmm. every creator, as soon as you publish things, and Matt can speak to this, I can speak to it. A, can I? a day after I published my book, somebody else published another book on Amazon of the same title, and you just manipulated the content around a little bit. There, there's mm -hmm. people out there who just do that. So there's no way to protect against that. What I saw, the reason that I shifted is not because I, I love this. Like I said, I love the creative process. I love who I become when I write. And to me, that's what the, the journey is. I'm not looking for hacks or uh, ways to cut corners on this because it brings me joy. I love sitting and I love piecing together uh, the right sentence. And I love the feeling I get in my brain. Still, I'm not going to tuck my head in the sand to pretend this technology isn't uh, happening. It's coming. It's a it's barreling down on us, and we've got two ways of approaching it. We can pretend it's not happening, or we can embrace it. And I think if we use it, embrace it for what it is as a prompt, this can be really powerful. Because I, as much as I love creating content, it's exhausting to create. It is. Yeah. You got to think it all through and you're, and especially if it's not what, it's not what I want to write all the time, right? Mm -hmm. I have yeah. to write this, but I really want to write that. When you have to write something, typing it in and just getting a flow like, oh, that makes sense. I can see now. All right. That's five points I can make. And I can scrap what chat GPT says all the time because it will prompt me. Oh, that's not, that's not right. That's not what I want to say. I want to say right. this and give right. the framework. Okay. So that's part of that journey. Yeah, I get it. I, th I think that overall it just, the, well, you you say it's not pulling, it's not scraping information, but it learned these words from somewhere. So I think that's what the biggest concern was. And I was just curious how you got there. I actually see the benefit in it too, because I've just come out of burnout and, and major, major, major creativity blocks. So I'm watching you pu pull this stuff up going, holy crap. You know, where was that when I was staring at a wall, not able to make sentences in my brain? Right. So I get it. And I get the value for people do, who don't have creative ribbons in them like we do. I get that. Um, but I also get the concerns. Yeah, so absolutely. I'm just curious. Thank absolutely. you. Absolutely. Yeah. Great question. Thank you for bringing that up because I know we're not the only ones struggling with that. Hey, Pam. Hi, everyone. Is this, if you're already part of NBB, is this already part of that? Are you, yeah, is absolutely. Yeah. Built in? Okay. Yeah, the uh, chat GPT prolific content creation call happens every Thursday, except, right. for, this, except for this one at 1.30 p.m. Pacific. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and Shuli brought up a great point. I was talking to my mom about this. She's a educator, a former teacher, but I was like, I would not want to be an English teacher now with this kind of technology. I mean, there's some of it that's pretty obvious, especially if you don't tweak it, but there's gonna be a point where you're not gonna be able to tell what wrote it. And this is another really important topic, guys, because uh, again, I'm 
been down a rabbit hole here, but Google isn't completely sold on artificial intelligence generating content yet either. Their terms and conditions specifically say it has to be originally created content. And the head of their uh, department that manages that has said that uh, AI is not originally content, uh, created content. So it's real important. If you don't wanna get flagged, the last thing we wanna do is end up in Google jail, right? So it's really important to take these, take my advice to heart. Use it as a prompt to create your own. Take it, it might have a great starting paragraph. Add your own story, add your own experiences into it. Make it your own and then you can publish it. Paula, good to see you on. How can I help? Yeah, I was going to say you and Jennifer and Matt and whoever else is writing the book and assuming that the content is stolen or whatever, um, I wouldn't really worry about that because you guys write in the books to help people in their business and their relationship or whatever the content is. So I wouldn't really worry about that because that's what people write books for is to open other people's eyes and, and to help them. Absolutely. And like, to your point, Paula, like <clears throat> there are some creators that will freak out when their work is stolen. They will literally hire a lawyer. They will go through the whole process to try to fight it. That I made the decision very early on not to do that. That was not going to be how I was going to focus my energy. Uh, and other people might be different than that. But that is, that's true. We put the information out there to help more people. So if that word got disseminated and spread, great. It'd be nice if there was a credit back to the original creator, of course, but that's just not how the world always works. But it's really sad when they they try to sue people and stuff like that because that just makes them... Um, how do I say it? It's not necessarily evil, but it just shows their ugliness inside. There you go. <laughs> I think I wasn't two... sure what word to use, but yeah. yeah, you're doing an amazing job, and the people that's in this is doing amazing too. Just don't focus on somebody trying to steal content because there's okay. a lot of books out there, and everybody's taken and helping themselves to whatever you're saying. Thank you, Paula. And Sorry. there is there's actually some theory that there's no more original ideas out there. Every idea is based on somebody else's idea that you learned about already. And it's this constant evolution of ideas, innovation of ideas, not original ideas. And in a lot of ways, that might be true. David, it's so good to see you on here. Thanks for being here. Hey, Phil, good to see you. Um, much like any good old Google search, uh, ChatGPT will suffer a little bit of us going down rabbit holes, uh, rabbit holes of information as we're typing information in. Any, any advice on how, to, on how to avoid that? Well, I think you still have to do your due diligence, right? So uh, just like if you were writing a research article, you might pull from multiple resources. So if I was doing a highly technical article uh, or something that was giving advice, uh, like for instance, one of my examples that we didn't get to was how to uh, drive in snowy or icy conditions. And it lists out five different ways. Well, I'd probably double check that, especially if something didn't make logical sense. I'm gonna double check that in Google. I'm gonna see if I can find another article that says, yeah, you wanna turn into your uh, uh, slide or whatever it might be, right? So if I'm sharing something like that, I want it to be helpful. I don't want it to do damage. So you can pull from other resources to verify the information before you publish it. And the other huge way is to add, make it more about your own personal experience, more than the facts generated from the uh, chat GPT. Right, because sure. most of what you know, you're not going to chat GPT because you need to know what an apostille is. You already know that. Mm -hmm. What you're doing is you're going there to find a structure and a flow of a conversation or a blog piece or something that you can share. And then you add your own expertise because you know 
the behind the scenes nitty gritty details about the apostille process and what you're going to go through or what the uh, real ID laws in New Jersey are going to be, like what's expected. That's the kind of stuff that you bring to the table. And you just want to make sure that you really focus, make that the focus of the articles. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Thanks. Great question. Antoinette, great to see you here. Uh, you're on mute. You want to unmute? Thank you so much for uh, answering my question. Sure. Um, I've been kind of out of the loop because I'm a notary with a company. I've just uh, retired, actually. And I'm interested in stepping out on my own as a notary. And so this NDB program is relatively uh, a new thing to me. So can you share how I would register and get started with that? Absolutely. I'd love to do that. Uh, Tricia, would you mind posting that link? Uh, it's joinnbb.com uh, to make it nice and simple. But you, uh, we partnered with the technology partner, uh, Rapid Funnel, to create Tom. So the registration, once you click the link to register, it'll walk you through, ask you a few questions on the Rapid Funnel platform. Then you can download the app, plus you'll get an account uh, on Notary Coach that gives you access to all of the course material. And then what you definitely want to do is come to the accountability call. Our first one, or our next one is today at 3 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, so you can get familiar with the teachers. Uh, you know, Laura and I are on there. Jen's usually on there, but she's on vacation right now. And then uh, the other members are on there too. So you can get to know each other and get familiar with um, the process. It's very overwhelming, guys. That's one of the, the trade-off for making uh, a collaboration like this is that there are there's 12 courses, there's 10 teachers, there's 20 live teaching calls, and there's technology. So the key is uh, to use your resources so we can guide you along the way and show you exactly what, what you could be doing next. You still get full autonomy, but we have all the resources to help you succeed. Okay, and in order to join this call, um, I'm Eastern Standard Time at most 7 p.m.? 6 p.m. Um, 6 p.m.? 6 p.m. Eastern. 6 p.m. Okay. I thought you were three hours behind. Okay. So with that, um, oh, okay. That is three hours. Um, so in order to join the mbb.com, I go there to register. However, to join the call tonight, do I have to register in order to be on the call tonight? No, once you register, you will be, you'll receive reminder emails. Mm -hmm. And then in the Tom app, we have an event calendar where you can just You'll get notifications on there too, but you can go right in and click right into the call. Excellent. Thank you so much. I'll do that. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Appreciate it, Great. Tony. Yeah. Uh, Lorna, I'm going to come right back to you, okay? Because my battery is about to die and I'm going to plug oh, in. Oh, okay. Mm <clears throat> Thank you, Lorna. How you doing, Bill? Good, good. How can I help? Well, I just want to make some comments. Um, I like this concept. It really helps because you can go brain frozen when you start writing up your little blogs or set up your website. So this is a good help, you know, to give you some words, especially the SEO. Number two, um, what I see here, a lot of time I used to get upset about, you know, people uh, actually steal your thoughts or your ideas or your business names. So people have to understand that <clears throat> you could think of one word or two words for your business and when you have to go into GoDaddy to get a business name, you have to make sure do someone else have that same name for your website. So, you know, it's not necessarily stealing from you. It's just that you could be here in America and somebody in Japan could have the same thought about that business name. Yeah. Um, identity theft is out there very strong. The hackers are figuring out everything from your cell phone to your computers and all that. So we just have to be conscious and mindful of what we say, what we do. 
but don't be afraid to do what you have to do to run your business because that's what they try to do is put fear in you. So don't be afraid, you know, this is a good tool or system to help you. But at the same time, you know, you're, you're creative people. We're all creative. It's just that you have to tune in yourself to see exactly what do you need to do and just run with it. You know, that that's just my comment. And thank you. Yeah. Thank you for saying that, Lorna, because I truly believe that we all are creative beings. I know there's people who think they're not or they say they're not, but you are all creators one way or the other. And to Lorna's point as well, this idea that ideas are not ours. Ideas, it's almost like we're uh, caretakers of ideas. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever had a time where you had this, this brilliant idea, right? And you write it down, maybe you write it down, maybe you just think about it a lot, but you don't take action on it. You don't take action on it. It's just simmering there. And then the next thing you know, someone else who had that idea took it and ran with it. I can't tell you how many times, how many businesses I've missed out on because I sat and simmered on them too long, just thinking about them. I think ideas, I don't know how it all works, but when they drop from the ether, you either take it and you run with it or who's ever dropping those ideas is moving on to the next person. Exactly. I mean, look at all the different types of cars. I mean, Cadillac, Marble T, Ford, you know, now you got Tesla, you got Mercedes. So, you know, everybody thought about the car. That's the key word here. But it's just different styles, makes and models. That's all it is. That's how you have to look at it. Yeah. Yep, Lorna, I love that. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. All right. Look at the, uh, look at the radio. Like the radio with uh, oh, Marconi, man, was it Edison? Some, like, there's like three different radio patents from different places around the world. When Back in a time when you couldn't communicate around the world, three different people had the idea for the radio and submitted patents for it. That's how those ideas can work sometimes. They're being dropped everywhere. So I think part of it is letting go of our attachment to ideas as our own. Sometimes they're not. All right, Trisha, do we have some more questions that have not been answered yet? Yeah, is there an app for this or is it just a website? It's just a website. There is a uh, another app, I think it's called Chatterly. I put, it's in my blog article, I used it. It uses this, uh, chat GPT because it's open source. So they used it to create an app that they sell and you can buy credits on and actually use it as an app. I have found though that the free version, just logging into the website is more powerful and more um, specific on the answers. So there was somebody on here that hit a, a daily limit on chat GPT. Do you know if there's a, a daily question limit? I don't, I, I, so the only thing I can think of there is let's make sure you're in the right place. Make sure it's chat GPT and not one of the knockoffs and make sure that you've uh, actually registered. So you have to provide an email address and I use it a lot. So I have not found uh, any limit to that. So it's OpenAI, ChatGPT. Um, Trisha, will you go ahead and post that link in there again? All right, Trisha, what's our next question? A lot of the questions were regarding plagiarism, but you pretty much covered all of that. Um, somebody asked if there was a place to find a list of commands, but I think you kind of covered that, that it's mainly just like talking to somebody else, having normal questions? Yeah, here's the thing. So some of the uh, competition out there that has been around for a while, like Jasper, you know, it has templates and it has things that to guide you. This doesn't have that. It's designed to be like a conversation. That's why you can pose your question. And it's just like, think of it like a human conversation, like ask better questions. That's the biggest lesson I've learned in this. 
ask better questions. When you ask it a question with lots of detail, you get a much better response. What else we got? Is that it? Uh, that was pretty much it for the questions. Uh, Virginia did put in their um, information straight from the chat GPT that says, as an artificial intelligence, I do not have the ability to commit plagiarism because I do not create original content. My responses are generated based on the information that was used to train me, and I do not have the ability to access new information or browse the internet. My responses are intended to provide general information and should not be used as a substitute for professional or expert advice. Boom. Excellent. That's all I got. I don't have any more questions. Okay. Well, wonderful, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you for your patience, first of all, with the technology issues as we were getting started on this. I hope uh, that even if we are in the terrified um, side right now, that this might tear down the wall a little bit and move you more to the excited mode. You don't have to use this technology, but you certainly can. It's a game changer. It's literally going to change the way content is created from this day forward. You're going to measure content creation before ChatGPT and after ChatGPT. If I can be of service in any other way, guys, please don't hesitate to reach out. If you want to join us in NBB, we'd love to have you, of course. Just join nbb.com. You guys have a great week. Members, I will see you, uh, I guess, in about 20 minutes. All right, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.